President Biden is set to talk with Mexico's president this afternoon, just two days before Title 42 ends. The southern border is already seeing an uptick in migrant crossings even before the pandemic era policy expires on Thursday. The two leaders are expected to talk about agreements for Mexico to accept more migrants turned away from the U.S. Matt Rivers is in Ciudad Juarez in Mexico with the latest on that. Matt, how will the end of this policy affect relations between the U.S. and Mexico? You know, the, the migration issue between these two countries has long been one of the biggest sticking points. You know, you've had uh, Democrat administrations, Republican administrations in the United States for years wanting Mexico to, quote unquote, do more when it comes to stemming the flow of migration here uh, to the U.S. border. In recent years, though, you have seen increased cooperation between these two countries, uh, including right now. Remember, when this policy ends, there's an agreement that Mexico and the United States just came to that when the United States is deporting some of the people who are there behind me, who will eventually be deported, even if they're not Mexican citizens, people who are Venezuelan, people who are Cuban, people who are Haitian, a few other uh, nationalities can, in fact, in fact, be deported back here to Mexico. That is an unprecedented agreement. Uh, it's never happened before between these two countries in that particular way. So there is cooperation. Moving forward, though, we see some points of, of, of contention, possibly. The United States has recently enacted programs to take tens of thousands of humanitarian parolees from certain countries, Venezuela, Haiti, Nicaragua, Cuba. And in exchange for that, Mexico has agreed to take some of these deportees that I just talked about. But those U.S. policies are being challenged in court. So if they stop, will Mexico then stop taking deportees from the United States here from other countries? That could uh, remove the incentive for Mexico to continue to take those people. So there could be some points of contention in the future. But there is cooperation right now, I think it's fair to say, between both sides. Uh, Matt, what reasons are you hearing as to why people are leaving their home countries? You know, I think each migrant has his or her own individual story. And I think that if you go talk to the people over there, you'll hear a whole host of reasons. Everything from economic hardship. You know, if you're a farmer in Guatemala, maybe you're going through uh, extreme drought. You have nothing to farm, so you come up here north. If you're from Venezuela, we know what's been going on in Venezuela since 2019. Millions of people have left that country. In fact, the majority of people here at the border are now Venezuelan. There's also places like El Salvador, where you've had incredible gang violence. People who have had their lives threatened, their livelihoods threatened uh, by this violence and so they've come here as well there's a host of reasons why people are coming here but for the most part I think the overall uh, theme is that most people don't want to leave where they come from I think most people will tell you they feel they have no choice but to migrate in order to find uh, a better life for themselves there are exceptions to that but I think that is generally what most people would tell you all right Matt Rivers and Ciudad Juarez Matt thank you Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.